I would like to continue uh, the message that I started this morning concerning the homosexual movement and uh, Second Peter chapter 2, verse 6. The Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 6, And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly, and delivered just lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you for your word. We thank you, God, for each one here tonight. We pray that you'll bless the preaching of the word of God. I pray, Father, that you would help me to preach this message, Lord, tonight in the right spirit. And, uh, Father, I want this message to accomplish what you want it to accomplish as it goes out, Father, to the radio stations and YouTube and Facebook and everywhere else. Uh, Father, we just ask you, Lord, that some lost soul might be saved through these messages. And we pray for your people, Lord, that you'd help us to realize the day and time that we're living in, God, for to, if there's ever a time that we need to draw close to you and live for you, is today. We pray in Jesus' uh, precious name. Amen. Amen. Here in uh, <clears throat> here in Second Peter chapter two. Uh, we read verses 6 to 9. I read this morning as my text concerning this message on the homosexual movement from Genesis 19, where, of course, uh, Lot ends up in Sodom and Gomorrah. And uh, without going into all the details there, to make a long story short, God destroys Sodom and Gomorrah. And he rains fire and brimstone down upon it. And, uh, and God just totally destroys the cities there because of their sins of homosexuality and lesbianism. And that's what Peter talks about here in 2 Peter 2, verse 6, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes. You know, one of the things that the Sodomites say is that there's no verses in the Bible that condemns homosexuality. <clears throat> I beg your pardon, there's a lot of verses in the Bible. Uh, they're in Genesis, they're in the book of Judges, they're in First and Second Kings, uh, where they got rid of the Sodomites out of the land, all through Kings and Chronicles there. And uh, it's found in Romans chapter 1, verse 24 to 28. It's in Jude, verse 7 and 8. It's in 2 Peter 2, verse 6. Notice here in 2 Peter 2, 6. And turn, notice what, how God describes the sins of homosexuality and lesbianism. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemn them with an overthrow. Condemn them. So God doesn't like it. Obviously, he condemns them. Making them an example. So they're, they're an example unto those that after should live ungodly. So you know what God says about the sins of homosexuality and lesbianism? It's ungodly. He uses the word ungodly, that should live ungodly. That's what God says. It's ungodly. Look at verse 7. Deliver just Lot. Now when it says just Lot, it doesn't mean that just Lot, just him. It means he was a just man. It's describing Lot as a just man. Now when you read Genesis 19, you wouldn't think that Lot was a just man. Because the last you hear about Lot in Genesis 19 is he's having physical relations with his two daughters. And from those physical relations come two little boys, and the Ammonites and the Moabites, which have been the enemies of Israel for thousands of years. And so uh, verse 7, and delivered just Lot. doesn't mean just him, because obviously his, his uh, daughters were... Uh, uh, rescued out of there and by the angels there and his wife but his wife turned back looked back and she became a pillar of salt according to the Bible so when it says just lot it says that he was just I want to tell you what you read Genesis you wouldn't think he's just he's drunk in a cave committing incest yeah. with his two daughters yeah. that's the last you hear about lot in Genesis 19 but in the New Testament Thank God for grace. Amen. Amen. The New Amen. Testament, Amen. 
It says delivered just lot. He's saying he's just. Vexed with the filthy conversation. You know what conversation means in the Bible? Sometimes it means your conversation, your speech, and sometimes it means your manner of life. Here it means manner of life. He's saying that the Sodomites in Sodom and Gomorrah, God, condemned, God burned them to ashes, the cities. He's saying in verse uh, 6 that it's ungodly. Verse 7, he calls it filthy conversation of the wicked. You see the words God uses to describe Sodom and Gomorrah because their sins, because of their sins of homosexuality and lesbianism? He calls it in 2 Peter 2 6, live ungodly. Verse 7, a filthy conversation. That's a filthy manner of life. Yeah. According to God. This isn't according to me. This is according to the Bible. Conversation of the wicked. He calls it wicked. Verse 8. We're not done. Look at verse 8. For that righteous man, boy, you wouldn't know Lot was righteous, you read Genesis 19, dwelling among them, among the Sodomites, in seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day, every single day, buddy, he saw all these perverts and weirdos all over, with their unlawful deeds. God calls it unlawful deeds. Do you see the words he uses from verse 6 to verse 9 to describe the sins of homosexuality and lesbianism? Now, as I mentioned, I mentioned about the uh, gay days that they're going to have down in Disney World in Orlando, Florida. I mentioned that this morning in the message. On August the 15th, all the sodomites are going to, or a lot of the sodomites, they'll come there by the thousands. An animal kingdom is August 15th, gay day. August 16th is Hollywood Studios. At, on the 17th of August, it's at Magic Kingdom down there. And on the 18th, it's at Epcot. Uh, this stuff started in June of 1991. They wear red shirts. It's called Pride Days to notice each other, red shirts. That's what they'll wear down there in, in Disney World. And uh, uh, Brother Johnson mentioned to me, Brother Johnson this morning, that some of your relatives or somebody went to Kings Island and they had the, they had a day, gay day or something there. And they had a bunch of red shirts on, all the sodomites. And some of his relatives went, they had red shirts on. They just wore red and red. They, they went back home and changed their uh, shirts. So people wouldn't think that they were sodomites. Is that right or not? Is that right? I'm telling it right. Okay. Uh, amen. And so, uh, uh, so during the month of June, this is why I'm bringing these messages. During this month of June, Many cities in America have gay pride marches. You'll see it all this month. Cincinnati, Columbus, Indianapolis, all around here, and then all over America. You'll see it all of this month. Different cities have it different Saturdays of each of the month, and there's five Saturdays in June this year. Disney World has Gay Pride Week honoring all the sex perverts in America and around the world. And so uh, this is what's uh, been going on. Now, I left off this morning. We talked about the determination of homosexuals. Now I want us to look at the deceptions of homosexuality. The deceptions. The Bible speaks a lot about homosexuality. Yeah. And over there in Romans chapter 1, verse 24, Paul said, Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women, lesbianism, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman. The natural use is a man and a woman in a marriage having physical relations. That's what Paul's talking about leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly. God calls it unseemly, wicked, ungodly, filthy. All these verses, 2 Peter 2, Romans 1, Genesis 19, Judges 19, and the Kings and, and the Old Testament, all that. And so uh, he says, Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, worship the, and serve the creature while the creator is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up into vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned their lust one toward another, 
men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Then he gives a long list of sins, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, and bitterness of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, they know the judgment of God, they know they're going to be judged, but they laugh and giggle and smile about it. Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Yeah. That's God's word. Romans 1, 24 to 32. In the King James 16, 11, authorized version, which is God's infallible, inerrant, inspired, indestructible, uh, preserved word of God without one contradiction, mistake, or error in it. Amen. How come preachers aren't preaching on this more? Because they're scared to death. <laughs> Little chickens. <laughs> Little chickens. Homosexuals, sodomites have endeavored to influence, sway, and change public opinion with deceptive propaganda and intimidation. As I left off the message this morning, saying this, it was Abraham Lincoln who said, quote, In this age, in this country, public sentiment is everything. With it, nothing can fail. Against it, nothing can succeed. Whoever molds public sentiment goes deeper than he who enacts statutes or pronounces judicial decisions, unquote. The common myths of homosexuality that are being used to sway public opinion. First of all, they say this. This is common myths of homosexuality. They say homosexuality is invariable and illustrative of normal behavior. They say it's normal behavior. The Bible doesn't say that it's normal behavior. Amen. The Bible says that it's abnormal. Yeah, That's right. Homosexuality is abnormal no matter what the uh, sodomites claim. Some sodomites have gone beyond the plane of defensiveness and now argue that deviancy is a desirable, noble, and preferable way of life. Uh, homosexuality is a perversion of nature. And heterosexuality is God's plan for his creation. Heterosexual means sexual relations between a man and a woman who are married. Heterosexual. Homosexual is abnormal. It's not according to the Bible. Homosexuals are not normal because God our Creator says so in His Word. I just quoted it, Romans 1, verses 24 to 32. God calls this type of behavior an abomination. He called it filthy here in 2 Peter 2, 6. Ungodly. All these words that we've seen, that he refer God refers to it as these words. He describes homosexuality as these words. <clears throat> the reason I said, as I said this morning... I have nothing against anybody in the world. I love. Her. I want to see everybody get saved. I have nothing personal against this group of people or anybody. I love her. I want everybody. I want to see everybody get saved. But this stuff has to be preached against because this is going to this is going to destroy America. Amen. It's in the process of destroying America. And sometimes, as a preacher, I don't know how other preachers feel that preach the Word of God faithfully. Sometimes I feel like a man standing with a pitchfork trying to hold back Niagara Falls. Uh, any place that homosexuality is referred to in Scripture, it is always in negative terms. This is why the battle of the Bible continues to be waged between homosexuals and Bible believers. The battle in our society today is by what authority do we decide what is right and wrong? What's the authority to decide? Who determines what's right and what's wrong? The Bible determines it. Yeah. Amen. What is good and what is bad? What is the standard? The sodomites reject God's authority in a serpent with their own. They will, they will also distort the scriptures to make them fit their corrupt lifestyle. The distortion of scripture will not help anyone when they stand before God one day. Amen. Everyone will be judged by God's words, Amen. which does not change. Amen. Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. He said it three times. Matthew 24, 35, Mark 13, 31, and Luke 21, 33. You say, why do you seem like you get so upset and stirred up about this? Because it's going to kill my country. 
is destroying my country. And you and I, as I said, some of you and I, myself and some of you, we might get out of here before the judgment and wrath of God falls on America. I'm not sure about that. We might not. We might not. Yeah. But even if we do, what about our children and grandchildren? Yeah. I want to be able to say, when, I, when I'm dead and gone, I want my children and grandchildren to at least be able to say, our father, my dad, and my granddad, me, uh, he, he at least tried to preach against these things and tried to stop with a pitchfork, trying to stop this, the, uh, the sinfulness and wickedness of America from coming in like Niagara Falls. He at least tried to stand and preach against these things uh, to try to ward off the demons of hell. Amen? Amen. It is interesting to note that in 1963, the New York Academy of Medicine Committee on Public Health reported that homosexuality is, an, is indeed an illness. The, home, the sodomite is an emotionally disturbed individual who has not acquired the normal capacity to develop satisfying heterosexual relations. That's what they said. 1963, the New York Academy of Medicine Committee on Public Health. I bet they changed that now. They said that homosexuality is indeed a, uh, is an emotionally disturbed individual, a homosexual, who has not acquired the normal capacity to develop satisfying heterosexual relations. Heteros homosexuality is not normal. Amen. What is normal about people, and this guy mentions it, some things they do, and I'm not going to mention it to him because you would vote me out of the church tonight. But some of the stuff they do. And they prey upon little boys and young men. Yeah. They say that homosexuality is invariably, it's, that it's normal. They say homosexuality is irreversible. That is deceptive number two. Deception number two. Sodomites claim they cannot change and that their behavior is irreversible. In other words, they were born that way. This is one of the most destructive deceptions about homosexuality because it can, it can lead to the abandonment of all hope for deliverance. If, they, if it's taught that it's irreversible, they can't change, then they don't have any hope. But they can change. Because it's a chosen lifestyle. Yeah. Just like adultery, fornication. Some people like to rob banks. Some, type, some people like to burglarize homes. Some people like to rob people and mug people and rape people and all kinds of sins. Well, homosexuality is a chosen lifestyle. Yeah. It's a chosen lifestyle. Uh, the result is mental problems such as deep depression, suicide, alcohol, and drug abuse. Some sodomites resort to these things because they're told they cannot change and that their condition is irreversible. But I want to say that uh, if a sodomite listens to these uh, programs and these messages... Uh, on YouTube or Facebook or radio stations or whatever, because we're going to put it on all of it, uh, that they can. They can repent and receive Christ as their Savior, Amen. and they can be saved and be delivered from this sin. Yeah. Amen. Extensive studies have found uh, that homosexual sodomites are 25 times more apt to commit suicide. They label their lifestyle as gay, yet many prefer death than to continue living this way. Studies also reveal that sodomites are three times as likely to be alcohol, uh, to uh, use alcohol or be drug abusers. Now there are several reasons why it's important that society believes this deception according to the sodomites. They want, it's important for them that the communities and the world believes these, these, uh, this, this deception. First, to admit that any sodomite man would want to change is to admit that there are folks in the gay community that have some, uh, that have come to the conclusion that it's wrong to be gay or a sodomite or it does not lead to personal fulfillment uh, and happiness. In other words, if they start admitting that people can change, then what they're saying is, is that they weren't born that way. And that they, you know, they, they can change their lifestyle. Secondly, to admit that sodomites can change is to prove that homosexuality is not physically or genetically caused. 
It proves it's a matter of choice and behavior, and they don't want you to believe that it's a matter of choice and behavior. They want to use the excuse that God made me this way, and you can't condemn me because I was born this way. No, God doesn't make you that way. If the sodomite community can convince the public that their lifestyle is beyond their or anyone else's control, then they hope to gain more tolerance from people and preferential treatment in public policies. This is why they are telling uh, they are telling us that they cannot change. Now the truth of the matter is that sodomites can change and have changed. Dr. Joseph Nicol Nicolasi has published material on homosexual uh, change and has done extensive counseling with them with successful results. In a 1970 report, the Kinsey Institute noted that 84% of sodomites shifted or changed their sexual orientation at least once. In 1981, Bell, Weinberg, and Hammersmith also reported similar figures. Schwartz and Masters in the 1984 Masters and Johnson Institute report revealed an almost 80% success rate of sodomites changing back to heterosexuality. Multitudes have also been changed through the saving power of Jesus Christ. If a sodomite seeks deliverance from the bondage and addiction of homosexuality, lesbianism, Jesus Christ can give you the power and desire to conquer this sin. Amen. Repent of your sin and put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Ask the Lord to forgive and cleanse you of your sin. Homosexuality is inherited, they say. It's inherited. A common claim of sodomites is, God made me gay. They blame their sin on God. Is this an accurate statement? Is there a biological basis to homosexuality? Sodomites want us to believe this myth because it takes them off the hook of responsibility for their behavior. They can claim, uh, I can't help the way I am. It's not my fault. I didn't ask for this. And since I can't change, you must change your attitude about us. In 1990, almost 30 years ago, 35% of sodomites claimed they were born that way. That still means that as of 1990s, probably statistics are probably worse now, that still means that almost two-thirds of sodomites don't believe that deception. Probably a lot more believe it now. Those who claim they are born gay endeavor to justify their belief by research done by Simon LeVay, a neuroscientist at the Salk Institute. LeVay has argued that there are notable differences in the structure, you ever heard this one, the structure of the brain the structure of the brains of sodomites and heterosexuals. They say it's a gene. There's something inside the brain that causes you to be a rapist, to cause you to want to go out and commit adultery with 5,000 different people, to cause you to want to kill and murder people and rape people. And now in the last 20 or 30 years, they come up with this thing that there's a gene. There's something in the brain of that sodomite that causes them to be that way and they can't help it. Anything but believe the Bible. Yeah, I'm sorry. <clears throat> LeVay has argued that there are notable differences in the structure of the brains of homosexuals and heterosexuals. 41 cadavers were studied in 91 and was, it was found that the specific portion of the hypo hypothalamus that governs the sexual activity was consistently smaller in sodomite men than in heterosexual or straight men. Thus, this difference would affect the sexuality of a person. I'm going through some medical things first, then we're going to get into some things about the Bible. Major problems were found with this conclusion. Two prominent geneticists, Paul Billings and Jonathan Beckwith, wrote their opposing findings in the Technology Review, which is published at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology at MIT in Boston, Massachusetts. They concluded several facts. Number one, the study was inconsistent in its findings by LeVay. By LeVay. Number two, since there was a difference in the brain structure, it could not be determined if the difference was the result of their sexual behavior or the cause of their sexual behavior. For example, researchers have, researchers have found that when people who become blind begin to learn Braille, 
the area of the brain controlling the reading finger actually grows larger. The part of the brain grows larger that controls the finger or brain. LeVay later admitted that he did not know the sexual behavior of the cadavers he studied. He was not sure who was sodomite and who was straight. It could not be determined whether sexual behavior, drug abuse, or disease history were the factors of the observed differences among the subjects' brains. LeVay is biased in his research, they found, because he said that he's driven to study the roots of homosexuality after his gay lover died of AIDS. Another study that gays, sodomites, refer to in order to justify that they're born gay is the December 1991 findings of Michael Bailey and Richard Pillard. These men did a study of homosexuality in twins, twins, of the sodomites who had identical twin brothers, 52% of those twins were gay. This percentage was used to justify the fact that homosexuality was inherited. A number of problems were also found with this study. Number one, the theory is not new. It was first proposed in 1952. Since that time, three other separate research studies have come to very different conclusions. A team from the, West, from the University of Western Ontario published in the April 23rd, 1999 issue of Science that, quote, there is no difference for the gay gene. Our data does not support the presence of a gene of large effect influencing sexual orientation or behavior. So they've come out with this thing for the last 20 or 30 years saying that there's this gay gene that these sodomites had they're born with and it just causes them to be... They have every excuse in the book. I want to say this. If you come to me and said, Preacher, uh, if you come to me Wednesday night, you said, now this coming Sunday, I'm going to bring my nephew or my cousin or my uncle or my brother or my grandson or whoever, and I just want you to know that they are a sodomite. They're a homosexual. But they are, said they'd like to come to church with us. I would make it a point not to say anything about this. You say, what? Yeah, because I'm smart. I've got a little bit of smarts. Now, 35 years ago, I probably wouldn't have. But if you come to me and you told me that, I would make it a point not to say anything about that. I would preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. As far as I know, nobody in here tonight has come to me and said that somebody's going to be here this evening and is a sodomite. You understand what I'm saying? You've got to use your head. If you come to me and said, my aunt's going to come this Sunday, she's a Roman Catholic. I would, I would make sure I'd, I'd make it a point not to say anything negative about Roman Catholicism. I'd make it a point not to. Say, can you do that? Oh, yes, I can do that. Yes, I can do that. i got a little bit of smarts. And uh, so, uh, it first proposed in 1952. Since that time, three other separate research studies have come to very different conclusions. A team from the University of Western Ontario published in, on April 23, 1999, issue of Science, said that there's no evidence for the gay gene. Secondly, if homosexuality was genetic, then why aren't all identical twin brothers of homosexuals also homosexual? <clears throat> why are not the other half of identical twins gay or homosexual. If homosexuality was inherited, then identical twins should either be both straight or both gay. Their findings, in essence, contradict what they claim. Masters and Johnson, authorities in sexual studies, said, quote, it is of vital importance that all professionals in the mental health field keep in mind that homosexuality is a learned, a learned preference. They learn it. The genetic theory of homosexuality has been generally discarded today. W.B. Pomeroy, a researcher, made this statement, quote, I have come to the conclusion that homosexuality is largely a matter of conditioning. This means that it is not inherited, but it is learned, a learned practice uh, of uh, sin, according to the Bible. Dr. Charles Wall indicates from his research that the vast amount of evidence clearly indicates that homosexuality is a learned disorder and is not genetically inherited. Not genetically inherited. Dr. Evelyn Hooker, 
said there is no evidence that homosexuals have faulty hormone levels or that their sexual behavior can be changed with hormone injections. On July the 15th, 1993, the National Public Radio, the National Public Radio is on stations all over the country, and it's a left-wing, God-hating, reprobate radio network. It's, any, it's against anything godly, any conservatism, and all that type of thing. Uh, they hate the president, that's for sure. Mr. Trump, they, the President Trump, they hate him. Uh, on July 15, 1993, the National Public Radio reported a new study in Science Magazine that a gay gene was discovered by researcher Dean Hamer. However, on June 25, 1995, reports confirmed by Science Magazine that Hamer was under investigation by the Office of Research Integrity at the Department of Health and Human Services because he may have selectively reported his data. In other words, it was not accurate. Needless to say, there was no fanfare about this news on the national public radio, I guarantee it, honey. Dr. John Money is the leading sex researcher at John Hopkins University. He reported, quote, no chromosomal differences have been found between homosexual subjects and heterosexual ones. John DeCecco is the editor of the Journal of Homosexuality. He even admits that, quote, the idea that people are born into one type of sexual behavior is foolish. He even admits it. You choose that lifestyle. Just yeah. like you choose to sin. Yeah. Just like a person chooses not to serve God, not to get saved. All kinds of different sins. They choose these different sins. Dr. James McCary pointed out in his book, Sexual Myths and Fallacies, that, quote, neither present-day tests, microscopic, or clinical examinations have revealed any physical differences between heterosexual and homosexual individuals. Now, as a Christian, it's not essential to have the statements of researchers to know the truth of this matter. Since God's Word says that homosexuality is an abomination, then common sense would tell you that God would never create a person as a homosexual. Amen. This would not be just, and God is just and righteous. God is not going to create us or lead us into behavior that violates His Word. He'll not contradict Himself. In other words, God judged Sodom and Gomorrah in Genesis 19 and rained fire and brimstone out of heaven and destroyed Him. And 2 Peter 2.6 says, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, as I mentioned before, I think last week or something in the study of Romans, they've had, recent, they've had these archaeologists for years going over there to Sodom and Gomorrah area trying to find some kind of some kind of proof. Some kind that they, you know, I, I know there's proof because the proof's in the Bible. Amen. But they're trying to find some kind of remains of the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. And as far as I know, up until this hour right now, they've never found any because God burned them to ashes. Amen. Amen. Our loving God, our sweet Savior, our compassionate Savior burned the cities to ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, Peter said, making them an example. God says, that's an example. Hey, all you, all you Denver, Sweden, the Netherlands, United States, Canada, any country, anyone, any, any of you, God don't, the God's the respective countries or persons. Yeah. He, they, he, he made them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. And in, in the text, it's the Sodom and Gomorrah and living ungodly. The Sodomites, he calls it living ungodly. God will judge, as I close, God's going to judge the Sodomites. Yeah. Yeah. If they're not saved, if they've not been born again in the Spirit of God, if they don't repent of their sin to receive Jesus Christ, their Savior, they'll die and go to hell just like any other person that rejects Christ as their Savior. God did not make them that way. God does not approve of their lifestyle. God doesn't like their lifestyle. But Jesus did die for the sins of the whole world. Yeah, man. And the blood of Jesus Christ can wash away all sins. 
if a homosexual, a lesbian, transgender, all these types of people, or anybody, if they will realize they're a lost, hell-bound sinner, and they will repent of their sins and ask Jesus to come into their heart to save them, forgive them of their filthy, wicked, vile sins, God will save their soul, and God will make a new creature out of them. God Amen. will make a new man, a new woman out of them, and God will use their life for the glory of God. And by the way, after a person gets saved that's involved in these sins, God wants them to quit doing those sins yeah. and not continue in those sins. Because we have some people who say that they're Christians and that I practice homosexuality or I, they say I'm a lesbian or whatever and that God loves me and that there's nothing wrong with it. The Bible is full of verses that condemn homosexuality and lesbianism and uh, transgender and all these different things. I'm saying in closing that when, you, when you're transgender and you're saying, I want to change to a man, I want to change to a woman, you're saying you're not happy the way God made you. And God told Jeremiah in Jeremiah 1.5, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, I ordained thee, I sanctified thee a prophet unto the nations. God said, Before I formed you in your mother's belly, I knew you. Yeah. And so God made us, and when a person wants to change their anatomy, God, and they want to change the, the, the gender of what they are, they're basically spitting in the Lord's face. And they're saying, I'm not happy with the way you made me. And honestly, folks, it's sad. You look at these people and they hardly ever smile. They don't have, they're not gay. They're sad. They ought to call them sad, not gay. They ought to call them miserable, not gay. But they can be joyful in Jesus Christ. Yep. If they'll come to Christ and repent of their sins and receive the Lord as their Savior. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand.